So at around 8.30 this morning, storms started rolling in and the winds got really rough. I was bunkered down in my house and you couldn't even see out past the barn. The barn's even not that far away from the house because the rain was coming down so hard. You can see that there's still some storms south of us. The clouds are actually headed west and that's usually a pretty bad thing because they say, well, I don't know what it is for other areas, but around here we say if the clouds are headed west, you better prepare because you're going to get it again because if it's going west, it's going to come back. So Here I'm standing out at one of our cornfields. Now this is right behind the machine shed. And they were saying that there was going to be some 60 mile per hour winds and usually around the headlands and especially around buildings, it can get, the wind speeds can get really high. So what we're looking at is just a bunch of corn plants tipped over. Nothing too terrible right here. Yeah, they're all tipped over. However, none of these are broken. So what you'll tend to see is, well this early, we'll see what it does, but um, when it does this, usually it'll just make a bend in the bottom of the stalks because the corn will start tipping back up and they'll start growing up straight. Beans over here are lower to the ground and their stalks are more flexible, so they're not as susceptible to the wind damage that the corn is. The majority of this top strip up here is tipped over. Now, when you do contours like this, where you do alternating fields, you'll often see that the corn is more susceptible to wind, to wind damage because for some reason, I'd say it's because there isn't continuous corn to protect the rest of the corn plants. The wind can't penetrate down as close to the ground as easily when you do alternating corn and beans. And it has less of a tendency to tip over the corn plants when you do a continuous field. If you look over at the old dairy pasture where we planted all the corn, the corn's pretty much fine over there. There isn't much issue with it. Maybe along the edges it's got some push over just a little bit. However, if you come back down past the machine shed a little bit, this is what a farmer does not want to see. If you look right here, the corn stalks are just shredded. And they call that green snap. So when the corn green snaps, it kills the plant. And there's a small spot right here that stretches back maybe 20 or 30 feet. And not all of them are green snapped, just a couple of them, I guess. And I'd say it's because of the machine shed right here, the wind was blowing faster to get around it. And it caused some more of that green snap going on over here. Even the plants that are completely flat on the ground, some of them aren't even snapped, they're just pushed over. So all these right here should come back up that I'm standing over. However, you can see, spots of green snap throughout the field. How resistant your corn is to wind damage really depends on the variety that it is. I'm not sure whether this variety is particularly resistant or susceptible, but it happens from time to time and farmers are generally covered by insurance, so I'm not exactly sure if, you know, how much of this corn will come back up. I'm expecting most of it to, but I do see a couple green snap plants in here. And that's never good. If you look across the road at Travis's field, most of that is just pushed over, or at least from what I saw. I haven't gone through it or walked through it. But uh, it's just a hillside over there, and there's just one headland on top. And it's not nearly as damaged as this because the wind was more blowing more heavily through here. Probably maybe 65 or more. So little education on green snap, why it's a bad thing, and often if you have wind insurance, they will cover it, or they, at least they should. So, uh, yeah, hope you learned something. Ooh, look at all that tin stuff that's on the field. Mm -hmm.
could be from there. Oh, that way. So we decided to go on a road trip through the back country and I realized that things were a lot worse this morning than I thought they were. Uh, just all throughout the countryside there's sheds that have basically imploded, sheds that have been blown away, sheds that have been lifted up, turned on their frames a little bit and I guess somewhere in the area a house had been, an actual house had been lifted up uh, off the ground, not totally but the frame had been stretched and then the house itself twisted around. So um, towards the end of our trip we saw that just up the road here, less than a mile even, there's a farm with a gr big grain set up and two of the bins were completely destroyed and a third one was badly damaged and odds are that uh, the fourth one of those will be, have to be knocked down uh, and then the fifth one, who knows what kind of damage that had, that probably had to that. I guess the winds this morning had gotten up to 65 miles an hour in some places, and they're saying tonight, I don't know whether this is going to hit us or not because it's down in Cedar Rapids, and it's kind of heading east. We're a little bit, we're northeast of Cedar Rapids, so unless something develops, which on the radar it looks like there is something developing, they were saying down there that they had over 85 mile per hour winds. So hopefully we don't get hit that bad again. The corn, for the most part, is fine. It got goose. It's going to be goosenecked a little bit when we go to harvest it because a lot of it was knocked down. But there was only a small patch behind the machine shed here that was actually green snapped and will probably die. So hopefully we don't get to that tonight because Ryan doesn't want to have to go out and fix the siding on buildings tonight. And another thing that happened was that uh, up on an upper farm there's an old granary that it was just a small building. Just an old granary that we haven't used in ages got knocked down. <laughs> Basically it's just a pile of wood on the ground now. So we didn't have any use for it. It wasn't worth anything to us. So all we have to do now is pick up the pieces since Mother Nature did the worst work of knocking it down for us. <laughs> So uh, I hope you guys aren't getting the same thing we are, even though Wisconsin, I guess, got a lot of the rain this morning. I think almost all of Wisconsin got drenched to some extent, but over in Platteville, there, there's trees uprooted, and uh, I guess a tree up, uprooted the sidewalk and the sod and everything under it. And I saw a couple trees when we were driving around that were completely overturned. They were actually broken off below ground, lifted up, on their side and then put back down again so hopefully we don't have anything like that again tonight and for the rest of the summer because that's not very enjoyable when you have to look out the window and you can't see the barn outside so uh, just keeping you guys updated on what happened today and what we've been up to so uh, be sure to check out my other videos thanks for watching guys see you next time